Good evening, and welcome to all to the exclusive Kidney Care Show, an initiative by Integrated Health and Wellbeing Council, powered by JB Chemicals and Pharmaceuticals. I'm Riddhi Lakra, Assistant Editor of IHW.TV. And in this session, we will dive into a topic of chronic disease, chronic kidney diseases, and about and its signs and symptoms. Like other developing countries, India has a unique situations and challenges that influence early diagnosis and management of chronic kidney diseases. According to the ongoing nationwide study, among people suffering from diabetes and blood pressure, at, at least 30% were detected with chronic kidney diseases. This condition rarely shows any early symptoms and leads to gradually great kidney failure. Kidney failure. Our kidney filters out waste and excess, excessive fluids from the blood through urine. However, in cases of advanced chronic kidney disease, people have dangerous buildup build up of fluid, electrolytes, and waste. It is noted that prevention and early detection is the key for management most patients with chronic kidney diseases. Hence, the aim of this talk show today is same to impart an expert guidance of chronic kidney diseases. We have with us uh, Dr. Om Kumar. Dr. Om is a professor and HOD at the Department of Nephrology and Renal, Transpl uh, Renal Transplantation at the Indira Gandhi Institute of Medical Sciences, Patna. He has more than 31 years of experience in nephrology and more than 20 publications on nephrology in both international and national journals. Dr. Om, we welcome you to this talk show. Thank you, Dr. Rizhi. Uh, uh, sir, I'm not a doctor, uh, I'm a journalist. No problem, um, because you are in discussing a very important medical topic. So, uh, yes, sir. thank you, Rizhi, once again. Yes. Uh, doctor, my very first question would be a very basic one. Uh, to give a knowledge to the people about what exactly is a chronic kidney disease and what happens in this condition. Riddhi, as you said that chronic kidney disease, the name itself signifies that it is a chronic disease which is in which the kidneys are involved. And by chronic, it is the duration of the disease which defies whether it is acute or chronic. If any chronic kidney dysfunction is of duration of more than three months, then it is labeled as chronic kidney disease. So if there is damage to the kidney of more than three months duration, then we call it chronic kidney disease. For this calling chronic kidney disease, we have to have some features of chronic kidney disease, like the patient may be having abnormality in his or her urine, like passing protein in the urine, passing blood in the urine, or patient is having some structural damage, like patient is having multiple cysts in the kidney or dilatation of the system of the kidney. So these are the structural changes which can be picked up on imaging, like ultrasound or CT scan. Second is, I have discussed about the abnormality in the urine. And third is, one most important definition of chronic kidney disease is dependent on the estimation of function of the kidney, which is called glomerular filtration rate, or in short, we term it as GFR. For that, we have to calculate it. We calculate estimated GFR from the values of serum creatinine and urea, which are the usual tests done in a patient of kidney failure. So if we are estimating serum creatinine or blood urea, then we calculate from the value of serum creatinine, what is the estimated glomerular filtration rate? And if it is less than 60 ml per minute, then we call it as chronic kidney disease. So two criteria are important for calling it chronic kidney disease. One is duration should be more than three months. And second is GFR should be less than 60 ml in presence of evidence of renal damage or kidney damage. Really? Yes, doctor. Uh, doctor, you spoke about like uh, the definition of chronic kidney disease. So when we talk about what are the various diseases and conditions that is causing chronic kidney diseases, if you could explain that. 
Yes, if we talk of chronic kidney disease, the causes, it differs when we talk of either we are talking about the pediatric population or we are talking about adult population. In pediatric population or in children, the commonest cause of chronic kidney disease is presence of or underlying presence of some congenital diseases like any obstruction or congenital cyst in the kidney or any malformation of the kidneys. So these are the more important causes of chronic kidney disease in childhood. But we, when we talk about the adult population, the two most important causes are diabetes and hypertension. Both diabetes and hypertension constitutes about 60 to 70 percent causes of chronic kidney disease. Other causes are glomerular disease, polycystic kidney disease, very common, autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease when the presence of cysts in the both kidneys are present and it runs in the family. So stones, bilateral, st presence of stones in both the kidneys and Sometimes hypertension, hypertensive nephrosclerosis, diabetic kidney disease, along with diabetic kidney disease and hypertensive nephrosclerosis, these are the important causes of chronic kidney disease, which we talked about the chronic glomerulonephritis and the various stone diseases and cystic disease. So these are the few, few four or five important causes of chronic disease. Uh, doctor, you mentioned about uh, like a very important thing about the age group. Uh, yeah. Like the pediatric group has a separate uh, kind of uh, cro uh, kidney chronic diseases. And it, it is different in the same in the elders as well. So could you tell, uh, like first I want to ask this, that what in what age group do we see this? And then we'll discuss about the various factors uh, that is increasing uh, chronic kidney diseases. By definition, we call... If the patient is less than of 18 years, then we call them as child. And above 18 years, they are called adults. So in ch children, the most important cause of chronic kidney disease is called CAKUT. C-A-K-U-T. Congenital anomaly of kidney and ureter, ureters. So CAKUT is very important. In Kakut, there are some structural damage and the most important part is if they are corrected at right time, we can prevent the progression of kidney disease. And the other causes are as, as similar as when they are present in the adult population. But in adult population, we should focus mainly on control of diabetes and hypertension, then we are able to manage chronic kidney disease in almost 60 to 70 percent of cases. Uh, uh, doctor, when you think? talk about, can you hear me, doctor? Yeah, you're audible. Yeah. So, yeah. So when we talk about uh, like specifically uh, the risk factors, so, uh, like, apart from uh, the regular diseases, what are the other lifestyle factors that is also contributing to the chronic kidney diseases? As we were discussing the causes of chronic kidney disease, so risk of developing chronic kidney disease, number one is presence of diabetes, presence of hypertension. Obesity. Obesity has become a, in a very big way to causing hypertension and chronic disease both in pediatric population and in adult population. So due to advent of modern lifestyle, obesity and hypertension has become very common. And other risk factors, if you are having a family history of chronic kidney disease, if you are having history of diabetes, history of hypertension in the family, if you are having history of stone diseases, if you are an elderly person, like more than 65 or 70, then you become a risk category, you become in the risk category for developing chronic kidney disease. If you are a smoker, smokers are also in the risk category of patients. Or if someone is consuming over-the-counter drugs, like whenever he feels any pain in the body or in the joints, they go to the shop, medical shop, and ask for OTC and take 
the painkillers, which is unrestricted. And sometimes this type of OTC drugs causes kidney damage. Similarly, some, some herbal medicines. Usually, it is thought that the herbal medicine and Ayurvedic medicines are without any side effect. But sometimes, especially the heavy metals, husks, they are very nephrotoxic and can cause long-term chronic kidney disease. Really? Yes, Doctor. Uh, uh, the, uh, Doctor Om, when we uh, like, we want to uh, talk about the very important thing here. Like, if somebody is developing now a chronic kidney diseases, we just say that it it appears in a very later stage. Uh, once it is in a very uh, end stage of it. So, what are the early signs and symptoms that a person can see uh, in terms with the other conditions, kidney conditions, what they have, that this also can lead to a like a proper a chronic kidney disease. So you have brought a very important point that most of the times we are able to diagnose chronic kidney disease in late, late stages when the disease has become irreversible and progressive progression is on. So it is very important to detect this type of chronic kidney disease condition in an early or primary stages. And all the signs and symptoms depends upon the stage of the chronic kidney disease. For that, we have classified the scientists have classified chronic kidney disease in five stages, one to five. And stage five is a stage when the patient requires either dialysis or transplantation. So our duty or duty of the medical caregivers is to detect or catch them in stage one or two. Unfortunately, the early stages of chronic kidney disease are mostly asymptomatic. Mind it. In early stages, there are usually no signs and symptoms of chronic kidney disease. So how you can detect? You can detect, as you have discussed, that we have to screen the high-risk category patients. Like any patient who is having diabetes, patient who is having hypertension, family history of diabetes or hypertension or chronic kidney disease, who is a smoker or elderly, they have to be screened for presence of any evidence of kidney disease. And this can also be done as a screening program, like we screen the school child, we screen, screen the employees of any institute, or we screen the military person or police person. So by screening, we can catch them. Coming to the your question that what are the early signs and symptoms of early stages of kidney disease? So in early stages of kidney disease, patient might be, might be having slightly raised blood pressure. And if the CKD advances, patient may be having lower hemoglobin or anemia. So combination of hypertension or unsuspected hypertension and unsuspected anemia, if you are not suspecting anemia, these two combinations are very ugly and it suggests that patient might be having underlying chronic kidney disease. Nidhi, uh, Thank you, doctor, for explaining that. Uh, doctor, there is a very common uh, myth that a lot of people believe that once they get a kidney stone, that is also a very uh, serious condition. But we often see the kidney stones get cured. So can, in certain conditions, uh, a, pro a person with a kidney stone develop a very uh, chronic kidney disease? Uh, is there a chances or there are treatments and they can get cured? Or as you said, the person with the diabetes or hypertension, or there is an age factor involved right. there. So you have brought the question of patient having kidney stones. I want to explain that renal failure or kidney failure is a condition when the both kidneys are involved. So if you are having stone or dysfunction of one of the two kidneys, patient may not be having raised urea or kidney. So whenever we see say that it is chronic kidney disease, it means either the patient ha is having disease or failure of the both kidney or patient is having only one kidney and that is diseased. So presence of a stone in one kidney will not cause renal failure. But yes, if any patient is having bilateral kidney stones, 
means kidney stones in both the kidneys and especially if they are in the ureter and they are obstructing the flow of the urine then they can cause complete obstruction and they can cause damage to the both kidney so the early address or early removal of those stones is very important but we have to know that every stone will recur it will again appear in the kidney or ureter so the metabolic workup why this patient is forming stone whether there is history of stone in the family mother or father or he is living in an area which is prone for formation of stone patient is dehydrated so we have to prevent the recurrence or reformation of stones in those patients because these are the causes the kidney failure due to stones in the both kidneys are usually reversible if you remove them there will be no kidney failure so this knowledge is very important that every stone should be addressed urgently and they should be removed if they are causing obstruction to the kidney system ready yes doctor uh, doctor uh, coming to my very next very important question uh, which a lot of people would also ask uh, if a family uh, the elders in the family maybe the grandparents uh, they have seen a kidney uh, chronic kidney disease in their family or in their relatives so is there a chances that uh, it is uh, like a heredity or is it like a overall developed a lifestyle disease right if there is history of some genetic disease in the family like i have mentioned the name of autosomal polycystic kidney disease adpkd it runs in the family so if the parents are suffering then there is great chance of the children having those conditions similarly diabetes is also or hypertension is also heredofamilial disease so if a person is having parents both the parents diabetic they are the most risk group to develop diabetes and if the parents have developed chronic kidney disease due to diabetes or hypertension in the children so yes if the family history is positive for chronic kidney disease or any kidney disease then there are chances of they should be very particular they should be cautious and regular check up of these type of patients should be done to detect them at early stage ready uh, thank you dr om for explaining that uh, dr om coming to my next question uh, that um, we understand that uh, once uh, somebody is having a chronic kidney disease it also affects the other body parts uh, so how exactly if the once the kidney is damaged and it progresses slowly so how it affects the body parts and now uh, is it in the most of the cases or uh, what are the chances of the retrieval so very important question as i have discussed earlier that the sign and symptoms and the strategy to manage these patient depend upon the stage of the disease so initial stage in initial stage patient might be having only slight hypertension so a strict control of hypertension is very important in later stages patient develops anemia so address of management of anemia anemia management is very important in management of chronic kidney disease and in our country especially in india or south asia iron deficiency is very common very common especially among female so before correcting anemia of chronic kidney disease by costly medicines like erythropoietin we should investigate those patient for iron deficiency or simply deficiency of vitamin b12 or folic acid if that deficiency is there we have to correct the iron deficiency and then we can give erythropoietin to those patient so management of hypertension management of anemia another very important is hyperphosphatemia in chronic kidney disease patients usually there is low level of calcium and high level of phosphates so we have to restrict 
phosphates in the diet like the dietary uh, the di dairy products which are rich in phosphates and sometimes we have to give drugs which binds phosphates which are present in the food so we can use phosphate binders and sometimes the lipids are deranged like high cholesterol high triglycerides high ldl so why we are doing all these things just to retard the progression because i have said that chronic kidney disease is a progressive disease and this progression is very specific to the individual it varies the, the rate of progression varies in different persons initially it depends upon the type of disease which has caused the chronic kidney disease but after a period of time the progression is relentless and irrespective of the cause of the ckd so we want to retard the progression as per the definition chronic kidney disease is irreversible and progressive so we cannot stop we can only retard the progression by controlling blood sugar by controlling hypertension improving the anemia controlling the phosphates and we have to use some drugs which are called kidney protective drugs and among this category the most important is use of ace inhibitors and arbs like ramipril and telmisartan and a newer drug has come which is called sglt2 inhibitors which was initially developed for diabetic patients like dapagliflozin and empagliflozin and canagliflozin so these drugs were used for treating diabetes but now it has been seen that these are reno protective it protects protects the kidney and retard the progression so this is our aim so initially patient will be having only hypertension anemia high level of phosphates but if the patient lands into a stage 5 so patient develops uremia and in presence of uremia like in stage 5 or ever patient will having very serious complication like patient will having the mental disturbance disturbance in the sleep there will be a bad odor in the breath of this patient which is called uremic fetor sometimes some urea like substances are deposited on the skin of the patient which is called uremic frost sometimes they make convulse sometimes they they become cardiovascular events like heart attack and so on and ultimately they require dialysis and after dialysis and stabilization they can undergo transplantation of the kidney these are the various stages of the chronic kidney disease really uh, uh, dr oh i'm sure a lot of us would not uh, want to go under this uh, uh, problem of uh, chronic kidney diseases right. so if uh, what are the chances uh, like uh, the chances that we can reduce the risk of developing kidney diseases and uh, what are the lifestyle changes one can do or maybe if it is there in the family heredity uh, how can we check this earlier is there a chance of that uh, what uh, how can we prevent actually uh, the chronic kidney disease so this is the month of march is the month of uh, world kidney day it is falling on 9th march so there is a very important uh, message that simple seven or eight things can prevent the risk of developing kidney injury and most important is is control of blood pressure if you are having hypertension control of diabetes if you are having diabetes take adequate amount of water especially during the summers avoid over the counter drugs and if you are having other complications of chronic kidney disease then you have to address so these seven or eight simple steps are very important avoid smoking smoking is very dangerous for progression especially if patient is having chronic kidney disease you have to stop smoking there is no rationing that like alcohol that you can take one or two packs you have to stop smoking you have to do exercise and you have to reduce the weight 
so these are the say seven or eight simple things smoking suggestion and control of blood pressure and exercise at least 30 to 35 minutes per day five days in a week simple exercise which includes the aerobic and muscle strengthening exercise are included in those programs so these are the simple steps by which we can prevent development of kidney disease Uh, thank you so much, Doctor, uh, uh, for explaining that. Uh, coming to our end to our uh, session, uh, so like I would like to ask you like uh, some uh, takeaway points that uh, people should remember. Somebody who has a chronic kidney disease, or maybe if they in future they see symptoms. So what are the things they should do? Uh, we can take it uh, it as a closing remark. My takeaway message is: chronic kidney disease is very common. It affects one out of every 10 persons worldwide. So every one person in person in 10 is suffering from chronic kidney disease. One in three persons are having chronic kidney disease among diabetics. One in five patients among hypertensive. Almost 10% of world population is having chronic kidney disease. And 13 to 14% women are having chronic kidney disease. So Chronic kidney disease is common and it is harmful also. So, chronic kidney disease is the fifth leading cause of death among world population. So, chronic kidney disease is harmful and it is common. So, we have to prevent it. The development and progression of kidney, we have to prevent it because the ultimate treatment is dialysis and transplant, which majority of population, especially in a country, poor country like India, majority of population cannot afford it. Every year, 5 lakhs patients in India are developing end-stage kidney disease. And what is the rate of transplantation? Hardly 10,000 transplants per year are done in India. So, 4 lakhs, 90,000 patients are not getting transplant. So our role is to prevent the progression to end stage renal disease and for progress, preventing progression, it is important to prevent or treat hypertension, diabetes, stop smoking, reduce the weight, do exercise daily, take adequate amount of water and avoid nephrotoxic or the drugs which causes kidney injury. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Ohm, so much uh, for explaining that and uh, telling them how important uh, prevention is also and explaining us in a very simple way what are the signs and symptoms of uh, uh, chronic kidney disease. I hope all our listeners who are listening would understand uh, the importance of uh, being healthy and uh, not uh, end up uh, in a hospital uh, with a chronic kidney disease and uh, listen to whatever tips you have given and uh, take care of our good health like. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Om. Uh, on behalf of IHW Council, I would like to thank you and uh, JB Chemicals for taking this initiative uh, to talk about uh, the kidney problems in India uh, as we celebrate uh, the World Kidney Day on 9th of March. Uh, thank you so much, Doctor, uh, for joining us. Uh, thank you again. Have thank a good you, evening. Vidhi. And thank you. I want to thank this platform for giving me opportunity to interact with the people who are listening to this program. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr.